what I'll do is now I'll just show you how to actually set up the printer side and then we'll come back to um, trans transferring that information over to the WAS 105. Okay, the ticket printer. Now as I say, the ticket printer uh, solution is a network based uh, system and it consists of two parts. It actually comes with a, um, a serial, uh, serial print server rather a, a, a sexy one because it actually has uh, keys keys that you can interact with so you can select different billing platforms, billing plans, remember I mentioned billing plans well you can use these keys to select different billing plans okay and it's network based as I say and that is actually driving a serial based ticket printer so uh, which takes thermal paper so these two together form the package and this is a close-up view. You can actually see the close-up view of the actual print server and these are the buttons enable you to actually select different billing platform. So it's rather obvious, you know, you increase the number or decrease the number and then you press enter to print the ticket. And this is what a ticket looks like. Now this is all the information which it's got from the billing plan and from the VAP. Remember the VAP, that's where you set up the uh, wireless characteristics, the SSID and the security, etc. So using that print server, this shows you what happens when we select a, um, a ticket. It prints out the passcode, which is a randomly generated number. It tells you the price. Yet again, that's coming from the billing plan setup. This is a one-time ticket, so you've got to use it all in one go in 60 minutes. And it says here that essentially the start time uh, when the ticket was created, the start time and the end time. So this is showing that the ticket was created on 9.24 on the 6th of August and it's got to be used up within one day. This is the SSID which has been put onto the um, ticket. I so say you manually put that in and you've got to make sure that matches the SSID that you want the user to connect to and ditto the wireless key. This is a close-up showing you what the ticket actually looks like. Right, so that's a quick rundown of the ticket printing system. Now what I'm going to do is go through uh, setting up the ticket printer. So file, new tab. So it's a network-based ticket printer and I've got this connected to the network. Interesting to point out that I'm accessing the ticket printer on the WAN port as well. So the ticket printer can either be on the WAN or on the LAN doesn't make any difference. I find it more convenient to put these things on the WAN. Now by default the ticket printer uh, address is 2.253. So let me just type this in here. 2.253. Now rather irritating you then have to do forward setting.htm. Now a number of people have said this is not in the manual. It is in the manual. It's not in the WAS manual. You have to go to the ticket printer manual which is on the CD it comes with. Press enter. Now we're into the ticket printer, and you see it's got a quite a basic setup. There's not a lot you can do. Uh, one thing you should probably um, uh, want to give it an address, obviously, which is actually pertinent to the network that you're on, etc., etc., and um, has a listening port for it. Uh, that's all you have to do. The important thing is you do need to know the address because you're going to have to put the address on the setup of the WAS 105. So you could have multiple of these scattered around the network, each, each on a different address. So now let's go to the WAS 105. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at thermal printer setup. Let's say you can have up to 10 th printers scattered around your network. OK, and I'm going to edit the first one. Now, if we do enable here, we put the IP address of the ticket printer in here. Uh, whatever, whatever you set it to be, obviously the default is 2.253, but whatever address you've set it to. Um, you can put a username and password, uh, a password actually on the access. I don't know why you want to do that. Maybe that's for the configuration of it, I don't know. I'll leave it blank as normal. And each printer is associated with a selection of different billing plans. Remember I said on the keys on the actual server, the little print server that comes with the ticket printer, you can select which billing plan you actually want to print a ticket for. So this actually shows how you can enable which billing plans can be used by which ticket printer. 
problem of the billing plan is the one that sets the price and it also sets how often the ticket runs for and how often you can use it etc etc so each printer can be associated with a, a select choice of billing plans and you can actually select the billing plans on the button on the front of the print server I hope that all made sense honestly it does it's dead easy in practice now what I'm gonna do now because of course you all found that so easy didn't you I'm now going to actually show you the PayPal configuration so let's go to authentication and let's go on demand and look at payment gateway setup okay now if we go to payment gateway we click on PayPal which is the only option available in the current uh, version of the firmware this is version of version firmware 002 by the way now when you clicked on PayPal you have to enter an API username password and signature now this information that you get from your PayPal management screen and what I'll do now is I'll just show you what we're talking about as far as the PayPal is concerned so I've done some screenshots earlier on of what a PayPal setup looks like okay so when you go to your PayPal screen and you say you want to do the configuration uh, want to do um, remote authentication using PayPal D all details of this are in the manual by the way I'm just rushing through this because I don't want to bamboozle you with loads of stuff but when you go to the PayPal screen it enables you to actually set up this key information this is what you're going to need you're going to need the API username the password and the signature now what you need to do is you need to cut and paste these into the setup screens on the WAS okay now let's go back to that let's uh, exit this let's go back to this so that's the information that goes in here now you're going to get that from your PayPal setup if you go through the manual it's very very easy it shows you click for click how to get that information up on your PayPal business screen once you've got it set up you can set the billing billing, billing plans so PayPal can operate a number of different billing plans when a person logs in or tr attempts to actually buy a ticket through PayPal he's given an option of which billing plan he actually wants to get a ticket for so multiple 60 minutes unlimited etc etc whatever you've set up on there okay now let's go back to that presentation okay now when the user comes to log in he can either put in a passcode this is the user this is the part this is the uh, password uh, given out on the ticket or something that you've pre-given them so you can put the password in or he can actually click here this is a link actually on the login page to go to PayPal to pay so let's say he clicked on there the next thing it would do is it would actually come up with the different billing plan options which are permitted via PayPal payment and this just shows an example of three billing plans that are actually being pre-set up for this unlimited multiple times one time etc 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 so we select what you want and then the user would click on buy now it would then connect to PayPal and then from now on he's on his normal PayPal screen so he enters the username and password to connect to PayPal comes to a normal charging screen that you would see on PayPal then it takes the payment and then it prints out on the screen the details of the connectivity so obviously he needs to know what those are he needs to write those down okay so he writes down what the details are more specifically he needs to know what this passcode is at the top now if it's a once only ticket then he may not need to do that but if it's a multiple use ticket then he'll need to write that down so he can come back and log into it at a later time but assuming he's written that down then he just clicks on login puts the ticket entry in and he's logged in for access so let's end the show there okay so uh, that's how you do the PayPal it's not hard honestly it is easy in fact it's considerably easier on the uh, latest way PayPal have done it the way PayPal used to do it going on for a couple of years ago was with secure, secure certificates and all sorts and it was an absolute pig trying to set it up then you had to go through lots of hoops and screens and get certificates from thwart and all that sort of thing it was a total pain in the bum doing it that way 
but things have actually got a lot easier with the package now.